Hello everyone, I am Rahul. So today we are going to take the second part of the our series on environment and sustainability. In the last part, we have uh, done the basic about UNEP, UN Environment Program, plus we did Earth Summit. In Earth Summit, we had three documents and three conventions. Out of these three conventions, one was UNFCCC, one was CBD, and one was UNCCD. It, this is on desertification, this is on biodiversity, this is on climate change. So we are going to deal with CBD, Convention on Biodiversity, in this <coughs> video lecture. So let's move on. Now coming to the convention on biological diversity, first of all what do you mean by the biodiversity? Biodiversity or biological diversity, it means all the variety of uh, life which is present on earth. So biodiversity manifests itself at three levels. One is species diversity, other one is genetic diversity and third one is ecosystem diversity, ecosystem diversity. So in species diversity, it refers to numbers, that how many and kinds, how many different types of living organisms which are present on earth. Genetic, genetic diversity is the genetic variation within a population of species. For example, we uh, each and every person has different kind of genetic makeup. So some kind of genes uh, become advantageous in particular environment and some become disadvantageous. Third one is <coughs> ecosystem diversity. Ecosystem diversity is the variety of habitats, biological communities and ecological processes that occur in the biosphere. Biosphere means whole earth where the uh, micros, plants, animals survive. Fine. So this biodiversity that we see on earth have come through a long period of evolution of 3.5 billion years. Now you should know that the life first originated in the sea and then it came on the land. So it, it is uh, like influenced by many natural processes and humans too. So biodiversity forms a web of life in which we are an integral part and we depend on the biodiversity too. Fine. Now <coughs> biodiversity can alternately be alternately be called as natural biological capacity of the earth and humanity derives its supplies of food, medicines, energy and many industrial products from biological resources only. Now extinction of species that we see around and we worry about has been happening for a, since the time the organisms originated and evolved. But the pace of extinction has increased dramatically as a result of human activities. Ecosystems are being fragmented by the humans like developing roads, railways, etc. And species are being eliminated. Habitats are being eliminated. And several species are declining. So this fragmentation, degradation and loss of habitats pose serious threat to our biological diversity. So these losses are irreversible. So therefore we need to save the remaining biodiversity to, uh, to like prevent the earth from going into the deep abyss of destruction of environment and bio, <coughs> biological beings. So earth's biological resources are vital to humanity's social and economic development, but man's action have severely impacted the environment and hence many species have got extinct. For example, dodo bird, if you would have heard of, heard of, it was in Madagascar and now it is completely ex extinct. Other one is monal pheasant, M-O-N-A-L P-E-P-H-E-A-S-A-N-T, monal pheasant. This bird has also got extinct from India. So seeing this and uh, keeping this in mind, in 1988, UNEP, that is United Nations Environment Program, called an ad hoc group of experts on biodiversity 
to explore the need of international convention on biodiversity and hence after several meetings cbd came into effect not came into effect came into its uh, like shape that we see in earth summit it will come into effect when the minimum number of parties to the summit sign the convention fine so now moving on so it entered into force in 29 december 1993 actually it, it was made in 1992 but it took at least uh, one and a half year or one year to come into force now it first time recognized that conservation of biological diversity is a common concern of human kind and it's an integral part of developmental process that is without conserving the biodiversity we cannot develop it has to be integrated now three main goals of this convention are conservation of biological diversity that is we should prevent the extinction of our species gene pool ecosystems then sustainable use of its components obviously when we conserve our biodiversity we can use it sustainably that is for a long period of time and are uh, like uh, coming generations will also be using it the third one is fair and equitable sharing of benefits if uh, sometimes what happens is farms and scientists come and take the traditional and indigenous knowledge about a resource and exploit for monetary benefits without giving the benefits to the people who knew it actually so this called for the third point in the cbd that is fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the genetic resources fine by including the appropriate access to genetic that is they should not steal they should take permission appropriate access to genetic resources and by appropriate transfer of relevant technologies that is relevant technologies must be transferred taking it to accounts all rights over those resources of the local people and to technologies and by appropriate funding fine so these three points normally we talk about these three points still genetic resources and we don't consider appropriate genetic resource access and appropriate transfer of relevant technologies so at the 2010 10th conference of parties you should put a comma here 10th conference of parties to the convention of Bio biological diversity now this conference of parties is a meeting which happens year after year and this was a 10th meeting to the cbd which happened in nagoya japan nagoya is a city in japan and here the nagoya protocol was adopted fine now issues dealt under the cbd or convention of biological diversity measures and incentives for conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity obviously this is the here comes the first and second point that is first and second goals of cbd the next point is regulated access of genetic resources and traditional knowledge here comes the third point regulated access fine then comes the sharing the results of research and development and benefits arising from that this is also a continuation of third goal then assess to and transfer of technology including biotechnology and the next one is technical and scientific cooperation these four and five points are recent ones i will be dealing in dealing with it recently here this comes under cartagena cartagena protocol of biosafety and this come under korean korean cop we will deal with it now coming to the cartagena protocol on biosafety actually what does this protocol means in essence here it means is that what the organisms that we modify by using biotechnology should not be transferred from one country to another and even if transferred it should be having safe handling use transfer and all and the the source country should tell the importing country about the organism and its properties and all so basically it is about that so it is effective since 2003 it protects the biological diversity from the potential risk posed by the gmos genetically modified organisms which result from modern biotechnology that is by altering the genome or gene all the genes which are present in an organism is called its genome so altering the genome for to extract or to take benefit of a some favorable property by humans fine so this is done by biotechnology genetic engineering now what was the objective is objective was to contribute to 
ensure that adequate protection protection in the field of safe transfer handling and use of living modified organism this is the same as gmo but in this conference we have used used sorry in this protocol we have used living modified organism which results from modern biotechnology modified obviously means genetically modified only so these organisms which are genetically modified can have ad adverse effects on the conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity for example in usa we have corn gm corn genetically modified corn in india we have indigenous corn that is indigenous variety gm corn if it's pollen that is male part it falls on the stigma of the female part of indigenous variety then it results into a genetic modification and hence loss of the indigenous variety so if it infiltrates over and over we can say that the indigenous breed will end or the genes of indigenous breed which might be useful for disease prevention that might get lost due to this hybridization with the gm corn so this for avoiding this we have this biosafety protocol so it takes into account the risk to human health as well as focuses on trans boundary movements that is illegal trans boundary movements should be prevented now it makes clear that products from new technologies must be based on precautionary principle so that economic benefits should be balanced against the public health that is economic benefit should not be prioritized over the public health precautionary principle means if we don't know the ill effects of something we should not try that as simple as that so it lets countries ban imports of gm organisms if they feel there is not enough scientific evidence that the product is safe and requires exporters to label shipments containing gmos like corn and cotton obviously if you label you can know suppose i am a consumer but i am skeptical about this gm technology if gm label is there i can easily know that this is gm food and i can avoid that i can take the other food fine so labeling should be done the next point about this uh, cartagena protocol is that is it establishes a bio safety clearing house so that it facilitates the exchange of scientific technical environmental and legal information on the lmos or gmos that is living modified organisms or genetically modified organisms so it assists the parties in implementing the protocol so we have a bio safety clearing house so this is the main thing about the cartagena protocol on bio safety now coming to the exact words of precautionary principles in the precautionary principle says that in order to protect the environment the precautionary approach shall be widely applied by states according to their capabilities that is suppose if a state is not able to feed his population its population then it can import gm food if it has no no other choice but if it has capability to have the normal food that is natural one so why does it need to import gm food fine because it has capacity to produce then then it says is where there are threats to threats of serious or irreversible damage that is suppose if you are if the gene pool of indigenous uh, breed or crop is damaged in damage in the sense that is infiltrated by the gm gene pool then we can't take it back because once it spreads in environment it can't be taken that for example skepticism was shown against gm brinjal it was the joint initiative of monsanto and meko maharashtra hybrid seed company so it was prevented from the launching due to this doubts here then we followed precautionary principle so <clears throat> when there are serious threats of irreversible damage lack of full scientific certainty shall not be used as a reason for postponing the effective measures to prevent the environment degradation that is if suppose by mistake we have spread it, uh, we have caused the infiltration of genetic material then we should take the preventive measures as soon as possible we should not sit back just because we don't have the scientific proof or something suppose in one field we introduced the gm crop 
and uh, sir government comes to know later that this field has been infiltrated by mistake so it should immediately create a wall by blocking this completely this field completely or uprooting the crop gm crop and all so that it prevents the pollen flow from this to this field to infiltrate it or it can take a wide space where all the plants are quarantined or kept in a control facility to prevent the contamination of the overall environment fine so coming to the nagoya protocol this is about assess and benefit sharing with the local communities if you are using their resource it was adopted on 29th october 2010 in nagoya japan and entered into force in 2014 october only so it is recently coming into force so it is on assess to genetic resources and fair and equitable sharing fair means uh, they should be given adequate amount and equitable means uh, like according if a poor person is there he should be given more like that so it is a supplementary agreement to the 1992 cbd supplementary means add on which was added in 10th cop in japan fine now its aim is fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising out of utilization of genetic resources thereby contributing to conservation and sustainable use obviously when the local people will be getting benefits out of that they will be conserving it for future too fine now coming to the main points of this uh, sorry uh, what to say nagoya protocol first of all assess obligations there should be legal certainty clarity and transparency obviously when somebody comes to assess the resource there should be legal certainty clarity transparency uh, we achieve in india by biodiversity act biological diversity act of 2002 where we have all the provisions how it should be done then it provides fair and non arbitrary rules and procedures that is equality should be there no side should be favored neither the local people nor the nor the company or uh, scientist or whatever then establish clear rules and procedures for prior informed consent and mutually agreed terms that is the contract should be signed before the use there should not be negotiations continuing and resources being used after the finalization of contract and prior informed consent consent of the local people only the resources should be used used fourth one is permit should be given when the assess is granted second one is benefit sharing obligations obviously when we are using the genetic resources of a particular place then the contracting party that is that has come to use the resource should share the benefits either from the r&d applications and commercialization of that particular product the third one is compliance obligations compliance with the domestic legislation or the regulatory requirement of the contracting party obviously contracting party in india will follow the biodiversity acts regulations fine otherwise there can be jail of 5 years and it is uh, what to say cognizable i'm sorry it is non cognizable offense now coming to the midori prize this is a prize given for biodiversity conservation so it was established in 2010 on the occasion of 20th um, anniversary of aeon foundation which deals with the environment or works in environment and international year of biodiversity that is in 2010 fine so it honors three individuals who made outstanding contributions to the conservation and sustainable use at local and global levels then it have influenced and strengthened various biodiversity related efforts and raised awareness about biodiversity uh, the first prize first midori prize i think it was given to dr kamlesh bawa i think so uh, please check the first name i am sure about the second name bawa is there i am not sure whether he is kamlesh or somebody else so it honors three individuals for first of all conservation and sustainable use at local and global levels second as who has influenced and strengthened various biodiversity related efforts third one is raising awareness about biodiversity so it is co-hosted by the secretary of cbd 
and is a key instrument to the service of the objectives of UN decade of biodiversity 2011 to 20. Uh, this question can say, can also be part of the pre question. UN decades of biodiversity was from 2011 to 20. UN international sorry international year of biodiversity was 2010. Fine. Now, 2010 Nagoya Protocol also had a revised and updated strategic plan for biodiversity, including the HE biodiversity targets for the 2011 to 2020 period. That is the for the International Decade of Biodiversity. So, these what are these HE biodiversity targets? These are 20 targets overall, which are uh, which are uh, uh, divided into five strategic goals, like. Within each strategic goals, we have some targets. I will give you some examples of the biodiversity targets. First of all, half, that is to make half and where feasible, bring close to zero the rate of loss of natural habitats. That is, we should prevent the loss of natural habitats. And even if the loss is bound to happen due to economic priorities, it should not be more than half. That is, we should at least half the uh, what to say half the degradation than the current degradation that we are doing of the uh, habitat that is suppose we are destroying 100 kilometer square of habitat we should reduce into 50 kilometer square of habitat fine now we should establish a conservation target of 17 percent of terrestrial and inland water areas obviously rivers lakes etc should be conserved so that the animals, plants and all can satisfy their water needs. And then 10% of marine and coastal areas should be conserved. Uh, you should know that there was a plan to have the marine protected areas. Have you ever heard? MPAs, marine protected areas where no fishing will be allowed and all. No like oil exploration and all are, will be allowed marine protected areas these were near south shetland island near antarctica but this plant was shelled because the non-agreement so then the third he target is like restoring 15 percent of degraded areas through conservation and restoration then making special efforts to reduce the pressure faced by coral reefs so these are the four targets out of 20 targets i have just told you total 20 are there we don't need to remember each and every one but we need to know about this five strategic goals under which these 20 targets are there coming to the first target uh, sorry first goal strategic goal a now addressing the underlying causes of biodiversity loss Ki bhai biodiversity loss ho raha hai. and then by by mainstreaming biodiversity across government and society people should be made aware that why we need the biodiversity and government should plan according accordingly so that biodiversity is conserved fine second point is <clears throat> we should reduce the direct pressure on biodiversity and promote sustainable use suppose the fishes are extracted from the oceans literally at a blastic rate and explosive rate so this should be reduced otherwise our species will of uh, fishes will get extinct and we will not be able to catch then they are that much even which we are catching today third one is improve the status of biodiversity by safeguarding ecosystems species and genetic diversity obviously uh, what what comprises biodiversity all the different numbers and types of species all the ecosystems all the genetic uh, material which is available in all the organisms present living organisms on the earth comprises biodiversity so we should improve the status of biodiversity by safeguarding all these three fourth goal is enhancing the benefits from all the biodiversity and ecosystem services we get a lot of benefits from this biodiversity and ecosystem services we get bamboo we get tobacco then we get gum we get fruits vegetables crops meat milk all these things we get from various types of biodiversity and ecosystem services so we should enhance the benefits to all from these services the strategic goal is enhancing the implementation through participatory planning that is we should involve people and we should decentralize the initiatives of conserving the biodiversity for example one moth is a kind of conservation of biodiversity only 
then knowledge management should be there the all the knowledge of different scientists or botanist or zoologist and all should be conserved and stored at a particular database also the resources that the local population use at the different parts of different countries should be saved uh, in a database to prevent the loss of that resource and then capacity building should be there people should be trained that are how to manage the biodiversity of a state country district city village and all now coming to the 2012 conference of party that is cop 11 the party is the 11th conference of parties but it happened in 2012 in india hyderabad lot of people came like approximately 8000 people or delegates came in india so developed nations these are the outcomes of this cop 11 developed nations have said that they will double the funding to help developing countries meet the he biodiversity targets i have recently told you then cop 11 also gave much focus on ocean and marine biodiversity so they focused more on ocean marine biodiversity countries agreed to pay more attention to sargasso sea sargasso sea is between the uh, north america and northern europe not northern europe is a rock actually so here there is sargasso sea because here water is still sargassum species grow a lot so this is called sargasso sea then we have tonga archipelago archipelago is archipelago is a group of islands tonga archipelago means tonga is a chain of island which is near the international date line that is 180 degree longitude and here we have nearby key coral sites and also key coral sites of the coast of brazil so uh, hyderabad conference or conference of parties said that they will concentrate more on these areas then maldives pledged that it will make its entire country a biosphere reserve very important whole country will be a biodiversity site then national biodiversity strategies and action plans forum was launched on this uh, conference of parties so it will give easy to assess targeted information such as best practices which are being followed in different countries and different places guidelines and learning tools for countries now this online forum is joint initiative of un environment program un developmental program global environmental facility this gef global environmental facility was made at earth summit uh, we will dealing with it in the next video lecture then cbd all these four that is secretariat of the cbd all these four uh, control the and manage the online forum that is national biodiversity strategies and action plans forum where they sh share the uh, good or better good or best practices now india and conference uh, sorry convention on biodiversity now pm in the 11th cop launched the hyderabad pledge whereby he earmarked the sum of 50 million dollars to strengthen institutional mechanism that is under the biodiversity act we have authority at center that is national biodiversity authority then we have uh, authority at state and authority at the district panchayat municipality level and all so these three needs to be strengthened to conserve biodiversity so, so this 50 million dollars will be spent here also then it will be used to enhance the technical and human capabilities for biodiversity conservation for example instruments for doing sensors for conserving various species various technologies and all this money should be used then to promote similar capacity building in other developing countries that is some countries have very good like capacity building programs so it should be launched in other developing countries also and then money will be paid through this 50 million dollars now in the cop 11 they were setting up of a biodiversity garden and national biodiversity museum also on the site where the this cop 11 happened fine now this cbd has approximately universal membership of 193 countries but usa is the only major country that is not a party usa is always a outlier in environment because it doesn't want to because the people in usa have 
very lavish and reckless lifestyle you can say now uh, india has ratified the con uh, convention on biodiversity india has also enacted biodiversity act and notified the rules i have already told you now the cop 12 uh, happened in 2014 in pyeongchang republic of korea pyeongchang is a place in republic of korea here by here they adopted the pyeongchang road map and it mainly focuses on technology cooperation funding that is money technology and the people strengthening the capacity of developing countries so all these three first of all technology then funding then capacity so these three were part of this pyeongchang road map then there was bio bridge initiative it was a mechanism for technical and scientific cooperation for example different countries different scientists working in different fields will come together and explore the interdisciplinary approach to conserve or they will gain from each other regarding the conservation of biodiversity and how to achieve their biodiversity targets with the help of use of technology and science then the next conference will be in december in cancun mexico fine the theme of the conference is mainstreaming of biodiversity within and across sectors that is uh, suppose uh, the plan document we should introduce measures which which civil lead to saving of biodiversity for example highways green policy the green highways policy was recently reached uh, this can be a method to reduce pollution as well as increase biodiversity then we can have uh, when our road is Uh, made in the jungle there should we should leave wildlife corridors so that the organisms are not cut off that is their habitats are not fragmented fine so all these kind of steps help in conserving biodiversity because they are mainstreaming the biodiversity within the different sectors of the economy fine now what is national biodiversity strategy and action plan now it uh, these plans as you know as you know by the name national national means nation itself decides decides here by the countries prepare national strategies plans or programs for conserving and sustaining the use of biodiversity then they integrate this conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity into relevant sectoral and cross sectoral plans program and policies like green highways policy so these kind of policies include within them the biodiversity initiatives too fine so thank you everyone please like comment and subscribe to www.decipherize.com please like our facebook page